commissioners voting in favor of the item signify by saying aye. 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 Those those opposed signify. The item is adopted. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. list of well-recognized people and organizations who oppose all or part of the FCC's media ownership rules is one of the strangest list of strange bedfellows you'll ever hear. Opponents include Walter Cronkite, William Sapphire, the National Rifle Association, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, the National Organization for Women, Senator Jesse Helms. Theoretically, do your regulation is good, but it's not always the right way to go. In the shadow of the largest corporate scandals in the history of this country, the last thing we need is to have regulators with no teeth. I believe it appears to me so evident that the big interests were served here at the expense of the public interest. Would you not agree with me that today those who most aggressively celebrate your decision are the biggest economic interests in broadcasting in this country. Are they not the ones that are celebrating your decision? I have no idea who's celebrating our decision. You really don't? Are you kidding me? You say they're modest changes. Clearly they're not modest changes. When, when in nearly 200 cities, newspapers will be able to buy the television station, you say that uh, it'll promote more competition. Nonsense. The evidence suggests that is simply not the case. You say that there'll be few mergers and acquisitions. Of course, that stands logic on its head. And you say the court made us do it. The court didn't make you do it. I mean, this is the, the old joke in the movie, who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? Commissioner Abernathy, you said that uh, we were acting out of irrational fear instead of hard facts with respect to the issue of consolidation. Is there any uh, evidence that you see with respect to consolidation, particularly with respect to radio in recent years and also television, that would suggest we have an irrational fear of consolidation? What you have to balance here is you have to balance the First Amendment rights of the licensees against the rights uh, of all the, uh, the public to have diversity, localism, and competition. The founders did not anticipate uh, the protections for commercial speech that we now have and nor did they anticipate essentially the warp to uh, the sense of the First Amendment that has occurred really since the 1970s. We have to revisit the terms. What did they mean? What were they talking about? They can't possibly have meant that there should be free speech rights for transnational corporations because there weren't any back in the 18th century. They didn't exist. They weren't thinking of that. They were thinking of the citizens of the democracy. Citizens have First Amendment rights to a diversity of antagonistic views. Media reform is something that is absolutely crucial. It is the primary issue. It is the most important thing. Nothing is more important because if we don't have a media system that we can use to get our word out, whatever our word may be, if there is not a viable democratic media system for getting that word out, forget it. You know, we're screwed. We're completely screwed. We need antitrust activity, okay? And, and that's a complicated thing and it will require that we rethink the, the very basis of antitrust law, which at the moment is all economistic. We have to understand that the real reasons why we particularly need to look at antitrust in the realm of media industries is not, be, not for business reasons, not for economic reasons primarily, but because the content, the crucial content of the news is, is completely distorted by uh, uh, large commercial interests.
some reporters have compared George W. Bush to Ronald Reagan. I reflected back on the Post interview from 1980 and about the hostages. How often do major news stories get buried down the public memory hole while a lie is turned into truth? There's a window of opportunity now. Most governments, most countries have not figured out how to limit access to the, to the Internet. And they've not figured out, and powerful companies have not figured out how to block information that is inconvenient or unfriendly to them or that they don't like off of the Internet, at least in this brief window that we have before they all figure it out. Will history repeat itself? Will the public find out about the threat to the internet before it's too late? We're not in the clear here at all. I mean, this is not a straight shot here where we can just go ahead and do whatever we want. It's, it's complicated, but, but it's new, and there are some things we don't know about it and no one else knows about it. And as long as there's a, is there the slightest bit of vagueness or the unknown element is, is something I'm going to exploit as much as possible. Yeah. 